So if somebody stops walking, okay, if we sit here and we add the same actual sort of graph where we've got, you know, instead of taking off here and going straight up, instead of doing something like that, we actually take off, we don't move, and then we go straight up. Is this what you're asking? If we're going to actually graph a velocity as a function of time, graph of this position as a function of time, okay, I'm going to graph the exact same graph but in a different color on the same graph, okay? So from here to here, if let's say this is 0 and this is negative 0 0.5 and this is 5, this is, oh, I don't know, that's not really well divided, but let's say this is 10, and this is 15, uh, 20 is here, and 25 is over here, okay? Let's say, if I'm graphing my velocity as a function of time graph of this position as a function of time, okay, what would my velocity be from 0 to 5 seconds? From here, from 0 to 5, you calculated that my actual velocity is negative 0 0.1516 or 0 0.1? 0 0.1? We good with that? Okay. So 0 0.1 would actually be from here to here. This is my velocity at that time. Okay? And then, and actually I'm going to do this in green because I want it to stand out. Uh, my velocity is about 0 0.1 from here to here. Now, from here to here, do I have a velocity? No, I do not. So your velocity is going to actually be along the zero on the x-axis. Okay, there is no velocity. So in green, we have velocity as a function of time, just so you know. And then what would the actual velocity be from... 10 to 25, um, if I go from 0 0.5 to up here, this is 1.0, okay? What would my velocity be here? So if we're talking velocity here, the velocity of this position as a function of time graph in red is actually graphed in um, green on the same graph, okay? Now, What's really, really cool about velocity as a function of time graphs is that if you are just given the velocity as a function of time graph, you can actually determine an object's position as a function of time from that. And the way you do that is the area under the line. Okay, the area under the, we'll call it a curve, even though it's not actually curving here. Okay, so in this case, actually calculating the area between the 0 and the 5, the negative 5, gives you an amount, right? It gives you that negative position. Is there an area under the curve from 5 to, to 10? No, there is not. And then from 10 to 25, there is an area under the curve, is it not? This would be a negative number. This would be a positive number, would it not? So, in theory, to get your total displacement, you would just sum these values up. And it would still give you the exact same amount of displacement. If you only had the green graph to work from, okay, if you only had the velocity as a function of time graph to work from, you could actually graph the graph in red here because you could figure out what your actual displacement was. Okay? You could actually figure out that during this time you moved from this distance to this distance. Because all of this minus this will give you from zero to your final displacement.